Hi everyone, this is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. I'm using a 2000 tick chart and a 21 EMA. I've got my overnight high up here and my overnight low down here. These are our key levels for the day. So I started trading at eight central time, which is this area up here. And notice that starting off, we have this uptrend, a break, and then two pushes up to a new high. So when a trend gets a break, you can expect price to play out, the trend to play out by price making a new extreme. And very typically, you'll get that in the form of two legs. So notice that these two legs here, are measured so two measured moves or two measured legs making a measured move and then a reversal so just wanted to show that that's very typical for trends to play out that way now when we start pushing below the EMA here and we form the swing that's when this overnight high level is clear and when we're pushing lower here we want to see a failed second entry we, we want to see a reversal pattern because that's an ideal trade coming off of the overnight high as the uptrend plays out and so when we start pushing lower here, we get this you know, first entry long, second entry long failure, but this is not a good failed second entry. You know, on this first leg, you wanna see it get below the EMA and then offer two legs back, forming a clear failed second entry, not this where it holds on the EMA and starts getting very choppy. And then you have this you know, downtrend break, push to a new low. So you already have you know, a push down, a break and a new low. So that's already not good for going short. And then when we get this, you know, push up here, making that failed second entry, it's already just been choppy the whole time. Not ideal for a, not ideal for a short. So anyway, we push on lower here. We go into this channel right here. Now we get a break and then two pushes to a new low, just like here when we had this uptrend break and two pushes up to a new high. We got the same thing here, but in, on the inverse. So downtrend break, two pushes to a new low. Now when you get the break out of this trend right here, you can look to extend it. You can draw a trend line off of that swing to see how it holds. In this case here, you know, as we make the new low for this downtrend, it overshoots the wider channel. And then overshoots tend to lead to breaks. Notice the spike up. The channel does end up holding here before making that second push up there. Now at this point, you do have a second entry short with a bearish bar, but overshoots, considering that they lead to breaks very commonly, you would not want to take that while you still have that active measured move in play, um, you know, because measured moves do act as magnets and considering that overshoots lead to breaks, you really don't want to enter short right there. It could easily just tick lower, push on up and reach that measured move. Um, also, it was getting a little bit choppy there anyway. And so anyway, we push lower here a little bit, start getting choppy, and then we clearly get the breakout. You know, at first it was, you know, after that overshoot, we had these couple legs up. It was holding along even on this part that broke out. But here is where it was more clear. Now we break out in a two-legged move. We clearly have this, you know, push this trend line holding here. It's kind of pushing up a bit. Um, it's holding right off of it. It was just choppy. I would not want to enter right into this. In this case here, it does end up pushing on down, but it really just doesn't set up well. Um, you know, I see there's two legs out there, bearish bar holding on that on that uh, resistance right there, but there's also the support working up. Um, it's it's all around just not a very clear area, so I stayed out of everything here. So anyway, we push on lower here and we start making the second leg down. So at first we had this downtrend, now we have a break and we're pushing down to a new low, making a two-legged move. And so we reach this measured move as we're overshooting this wider trend line, this wider trend, and again, overshoots tend to lead to breaks. And considering we're also reaching this measured move, that is even more likely to have a reversal because price reverses after two-legged moves. And you know, if you can expect a, a break after this overshoot, then that would obviously be pushing to the upside. So when we get these couple legs up right here, we meet this measured move. Let me just unclutter this a bit. We get these two legs up here. It pushes way past that measured move. And we start finding resistance at this up measured move, but you're still right into that previous down measured move level. So you don't want to enter short right into that. Um, again, it's very common to reverse after these levels, even if you push through them a bit. So you would not want to enter short right into that. It could just bounce right off of that level. Um, so anyway, we push on lower here. Price is unable to make a second leg down because it's getting too bullish. We push on up here and start forming this little trend line here. Now when we, when we, <clears throat> excuse me, when we reach this trend line right here, notice I got it off those first two swings there. You don't want to immediately go short one because it's into this trend line, but also overshoots lead to break. So you want to have a very clear reaction before you enter short. 
Now, it starts to get choppy here. It doesn't offer any entry. By the time it's going all sideways like that, there's no way. Um, it hasn't even pushed below the EMA and then held below clearly yet. So, nothing there. What could have happened was a big failed second entry that actually breaks this trend line. You know, like, sorry, let me just move that aside. You know, we could have formed something like this, a push out with two clear legs back, you know, forming a failed second entry. That way, when you get the break of this uptrend, you would have your two attempts at a new high. Obviously, you can get bigger picture ones as it pushes lower, but, at, you know, at the time, you, that would be enough for a short still if you got a good reversal pattern like that. But, um, but it just doesn't form, so... Anyway, we didn't get that, so we push on up here, break out. Now this channel is finally broken. It immediately pushes back in, but then pushes back out, so it starts to get very choppy right here. Notice this range that's starting to form here. And, yeah, I mean, there's really nothing to take. As we, we get a couple legs up here, make this double bottom, you can see we have a couple legs up. Um, I mean, you don't want to enter short right into that. We also have this uptrend clearly in play that you don't want to enter all the way down into those lows. So really nothing to enter into. You're just entering short into the EMA and trend line at that point. No reason to do that. So, but then here, when we get this first entry long, second entry long, you know, even though to the tick you have that, it is starting to get choppy there. It's right into the EMA. It's just not an ideal place. You know, there's not much room between these highs and this trend line. I would just wait for price to get out of this area and, and just make a cleaner setup somewhere else. Now, notice here that we have this push up, you know, these multiple legs here eventually turn into one clear leg, and then this was our break, and then this is that second leg up. So I'm just gonna remove a couple things just so it's easier to see. Um, and then of course, both of these legs turn into one leg on a bigger picture, but we'll get into that in a sec. So we have these two legs up right here, it's pushing on up, no no long entries on the way up here you know even when we push up here we get this first entry long off the ema it's just a first entry you want to see second entries and we reach this measured move now it just blasts on through it pushes on through that measured move and overshoots this channel at the same time now when you overshoot that tends to lead to breaks just like i've been saying and so you want to see two clear attempts to fade now notice here remember how here we had those two attempts but we still don't want to go short because it was right into that previous measured move now in this case here, we have our two attempts um, to reverse since the overshoot, but we're actually holding on top of this, me this previous measured move level. So rather than entering into it, we're actually, uh, it's actually adding to our trade here. It's, it's holding on top of it, and this is a you know, big measured move level, so this is a big deal. So let me just zoom in here. Notice that we have these two legs down, measured move, holding off of that previous measured move level, clearly also holding off of this support that's forming with these range lows, a push above and then a higher low. I only liked it after it closed above um, the EMA here because, sorry, this is not scaling properly. There we go. I only liked it after it closed above the EMA because it did push back below though and then below there and then you don't want to, you know, if it can't get above, that's not a good sign. But when it pushes above here, you just need a limit order to get out of those highs. So I really like this one. Um, and, you know, sometimes you're going to go, a whole day and then you're not going to get anything till the very end so um you know sometimes you're just going to watch price go by without taking anything and that's always fine you know there's there's always more trades um so don't get discouraged whenever you know you're multiple hours in without anything because sometimes you'll get something right at the very end and so we're obviously forming this bigger up measured move here now when we push up here we get this we make this triple top it pushes lower here bounces off those lows and then just takes off. No entries to get up there. Um, you know, it just doesn't set up properly. Um, it just doesn't set up anything properly here. It just pushes on lower and just takes off. So, you know, really nothing there. Um, and by the way, whenever you overshoot and then, you know, the channel ends up continuing. Now, in this case, it didn't bounce right off the key entry point, but you can always check to see, you know, how it holds on that overshoot, assuming that it doesn't just keep on pushing on out from there. Uh, in this case here, it did not react off of it, but sometimes the channels will be extended from overshoots that end up um, holding back in. So anyway, um, pushed on through this major measured move level. This could have been a great area to get a reversal. You know, even if we, you know, even though this measured, excuse me, even though this uptrend is still in play, um, 
if we push off right here and break it, we can make a very big picture reversal pattern. Um, you know, something like this. A couple legs back here after a push down. You know, because if we get a break of this uptrend, we'd have this uptrend and then break, first attempt higher, second attempt higher, and we can look to enter short on the failure. And so that would be perfect with this failed second entry here, this reversal pattern. Um, but it just doesn't happen. It just pushes on through that measured move and it looks like only now is it attempting to reverse. It could make a failed second entry um, from here. You know, since it's so overshot from this trend, you have plenty of room. Um, but anyway, so, and yeah, plenty of room down to this lower trend line right here is what I meant. Um, Cause you still wouldn't want to enter into it even though it has a major overshoot, but it could push down and make something that has room. But uh, anyway, it could also just I mean, it could make a very big picture, failed second entry, pushing back in. Um, you know, anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it helped out in some way. I'm probably not going to get the NQ video out today. Um, I just have to go deal with something. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.